Welcome to the Hanford Dixon Show. I'm Gabriella Cruz alongside the top dog. Woo, woo. Great. I was saving that bark. Yo, oh, that one was a good one, too. I had to it was like get it really... in. I had to get it <laughs> in. You better believe it. You can tell you rested your voice for that. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> yes. How are you? I'm good. How was your Easter? You know, Gabby, it was good. Uh, this is funny. I got to tell you this. Well, uh, you can call it funny, whatever. So, uh, Friday, I found out uh, at the church, uh-huh. they had uh, seven pastors, seven ministers who each, I think they had about uh, 20 to 25 minutes each, and they gave a sermon. And uh, I went to, yeah, so you, I, did you have a bite to eat before well, that? <laughs> well, I did. Well, I, I only I stayed uh, I I was stayed to see about five of them. Okay. Then I had to get out of there, but uh, because I had another appointment. But actually, it was uh, it was pretty good, and uh, obviously, it, the church was packed. I mean, absolutely packed because uh, you know how it is on Easter, and you see a lot of people that has haven't been to church in a long, long time. <laughs> So they want to come and they want to watch and talk about uh, he is risen, talk, obviously God. But uh, uh, I go to church often, so it's not a uh, not during football season, but I go, you know, when I have a chance to because on Sundays we play right. games. And, and which church you and, go to again? Uh, Mount Sinai Baptist Church, where uh, Reverend, Reverend C.J. Matthews is the uh, uh, is the pastor, giving him and the uh, church a shout out. But I was, but where I was headed with this, it was really, really good. I mean, it was really, really good. I went when I had a chance to go there, and uh, other than that, I mean, what I did was uh, pretty much uh, Easter. Didn't do a lot. Oh, I have to say this: um, I, I Saturday night I w- went to uh, Canton, and it was um, it was pretty sad because they they were doing a fundraiser for this uh, uh, this guy Larry who died, and um, he's his wife, and he's got a couple of kids, and this guy, had, all of a sudden, he didn't know he had cancer, and it took him in like 30 days. It was oh, so, wow. so yeah. sad. And the good thing about it, though, he's in a better place, but what they did was they raised a lot of, lot of money, so I went to that. And Sunday, Easter Sunday, Gab, I was just like a... a Old hog, I didn't do anything. I just that's old, old Southern talk, you know, like old hog. I didn't. I'll, do, I'll use that one. I'll, I'll put that in my back pocket. <laughs> I I just stayed home and I watched uh, TV, watched the movie. Oh, I gotta ask you this question. I watch something uh, every time I'm coming up with something. I know you give <laughs> know. me you give me that look. Uh, uh, I watched this uh, movie. It's called Have You Heard of Only the Brave? I have heard of it. Yeah. It's a it really sad, right? It, yeah. It's based on a true story, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's about these 20 firefighters, and uh, they were fighting these brush fires, and all of a sudden the wind changed, and they had to dig in and uh, protect themselves. And they had on these jackets, and they all put these jackets on that were supposed to save them. But, Gab, it was so sad. All of them died except one. So 19 out of the 20 firefighters died. And I, it's based on a true story. It was pretty, pretty sad. And I, I got teared up. So. Did you? You got teary Yeah, eyed. because yeah. what happened was they had the families and they were looking for them. And, and, and then it was the kids. And, mm-hmm. and it was just uh, it was just pretty sad. So I'm going to get off of them. Get off of that because that'll mm-hmm. bring us down for the show. Well, you know, we've 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 had plenty of sad chats talking about our Browns on this show. And, um, I mean, hey, so to bring up this, this is real life, you mm-hmm. know, and people pay mm-hmm. the ultimate sacrifice, It especially when we're talking about, you know, the Lenten season, not to be too yeah. spiritual, but um, we are focused on that, that suffering. And out of suffering, usually there is, um, you know, there's a purpose in our suffering. So mm-hmm. for them to have made that ultimate sacrifice, you know, you do get teary-eyed because you realize that that, that the the bigger blessing is how they're serving communities yes. and what they're trying to do to keep people safe. So um, I always have a lot of respect for those who do serve the community. Well, I have another question for you. Yes, sir. Uh, are you a big lottery person? Um, you know, my mom kind of is. Like every once in a while, she'll buy us a lottery ticket. And I, I'm, a, I'm a big loser. I don't know. Are you lucky with this stuff? 
Gap. Listen to me. Oh, uh, are you talking about the one that's like up a lot right now? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so how many did you buy? <laughs> Enough. Let's just say this because are you gonna give me one. Absolutely, and I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna go in the air and say it right now. If I win, you guys are you guys are taken care of. So All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go in the air right now, and I will not be cheap with you. But this thing, this thing. I mean, can you believe it? I mean, there was one ticket sold. Yeah. I think it was last week, two weeks ago, whatever it was, over a billion dollars, one ticket. And I think what's going to and I uh, uh, I don't know yet if anyone won, but I think the last drawing was uh, pretty much uh, right at a billion. You got to watch out, though, because if you see those stories, I feel like it's a crazy percentage of winners who end up bankrupt or something. Yeah. Well, let me go bankrupt winning a million dollars. Uh, okay. I, I'll take my <laughs> chances on that one. What do you say? You said, let me try it out first. <laughs> hey, hey, Bones, I, I, I got something to say about, uh, did you notice uh, Gabby today? Did you see her? Uh, you think maybe she went to a professional makeup uh person or something because look at her she's late <laughs> today with that makeup i mean you go girl what the stop hell it, I mean, did you do it, it yourself or <laughs> i did it's i do the same thing every day or every time uh we have a show so finally i've captured your attention you know i guess that that i've come looking presentable <laughs> but, but this is what's funny we're finally uh, i've caught your attention uh uh she's looking all uh I see, dapper do i like it i like it i'm being silly because you know what i have been sick for like shoot probably four weeks now it's crazy so i haven't always felt you know the most dapper but i'm i'm glad that at least you know my my inner beauty must be shining through <laughs> have you uh started back your running Oh, I never left. I ne I I've been sick, but I'll be I'll be damned if I give up the streak at this time. I've been running every day for five months now. Well, what is this you have on uh, Instagram going on? I, 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 yeah, it's my running challenge. I don't know. In December, I just decided one day I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna run every day of December, and then I couldn't stop once I got in a good flow. It's really it's not about going fast or far. Uh -huh. Hanford, just something happened in my brain, though, where I feel like the discipline and the consistency has given me just a good, like, I'm on a roll. I can't stop. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. So good. I just keep it going real light, but... But yeah, I'm still getting over this sickness, but kept the streak alive. Well, what I think is, is happening also is this watching you do that is encouraging a lot of people. Yes, so many people. Yeah. I love being a, I, you know, I'm a professional hype woman. So yeah. I love when people message me and they're saying, because of you, I started back. I'm getting a lot of messages, actually. And I, that's what I was hoping it was for. It was for, I, I post it on my story for personal accountability. But the other byproduct is to help uplift other people who might be trying to get into it. So. Well, we have a special guest coming on, don't we? Yes, we do. So we're going to we're gonna go ahead and take our first break of the show. We'll be back and uh, we'll be back with Phil Taylor. So stay tuned. Welcome back to the Hanford Dixon Show. We are so excited to bring on Phil Taylor, former nose tackle, defensive tackle. You know, how do we say it? Nose tackle, defensive tackle for the Cleveland Browns? Well, you got to ask him, you know, which say which is it? You know, or or know, is it the same thing? Is it, it can't be the same thing, right? But I just feel like we don't, I say, like no, nose. We don't say nose tackle a lot. <laughs> you are a specific, unique person, though, so it makes sense that you were a nose tackle. Drafted 2011 uh, by the Cleveland Browns, 21st overall out of Penn State and Baylor. So thanks for coming on, Phil. We really appreciate you, Mr. Nose Tackle. Appreciate you guys having me. Thank hey, you. Thank hey, you. Hey, Phil, I have a question right off the bat. You say you like nose tackle as defensive tackle. Is there a difference or is it pretty much the same thing? I think it's a difference. Nose tackle was, you know, the bigger 330-plus guys. You know, you're playing the one technique, the zero technique, and, and at best you might get out there at the three a little bit. But uh, yeah, nose tackle, man. I look at it as like a, a Vince Wilfer, you know, those type of guys, big body guys. It's not a lot of them now in football, you know, with all the, the zone running and passing. So you know, it's a, uh, you know, we're a dying breed, you know, in the NFL. <laughs> I was gonna say we don't hear it very often, so we well, just wondered. I mean, it was we were more used for you know when the NFL was a lot you know tougher, you know, in the in the Smash Mouth. <laughs> you know, the the run game and, and things like that, you know. And being in the AFC North, you know, it, it was a must. You know, guys like me, Casey Hampton, you got a, a big, big uh, Tony Saragusa and and guys like that. And, and 
you know, so you know the, the league turns to passing now. It got a little softer, so you know those those yeah. big guys. We we're not as needed as much. Yeah. What do you think about this evolution of the NFL? Would you have preferred to play now or when you did? <laughs> no, I don't want to play. I wouldn't want to play in the NFL now. It is, I would have too many fines and things yeah. Like that. <laughs> I, my era was perfect for when I played, and I'm glad I I got in when I could and got out when I could. So yeah. Well, I agree with you because I, you've heard me say it probably a lot of times. I just think it's soft. I, I, I think <laughs> the NFL is soft because, and, and Phil, you can comment on this because, you know, they make, I mean, all of our jobs easy, hard on defense, but especially uh, the defensive line because if those guys are getting, I mean, first they talk about now they got this new rule, a hip tackle, whatever the hell that is. I, I don't have a clue what that is. Yeah, and then they crazy. got it where the quarterback, they, they, they trying to protect the quarterback, but you can't even, I mean, if you all in one motion, if you dare to him and he, he's, he hasn't thrown the ball, he's about to throw the football. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't fall on him. I mean, what the hell, Phil? I mean, what is all this stuff they're coming up with? Bunch of BS. You know, they're making a the game. They want – you know, ultimately, they want money, you know, and points earn money. You know, the more points scored, the more people come to watch and the more money they make. So they want to see points scored, you know what I mean? And it's just making it harder and harder for defenses because we got to, you know, we're running full speed, but we got to think about where he's going to fall or something or how we fall on him. And, you know, I mean, just like with the new rule, the hip drop, they right. call it yeah. hip drop tackle. Right. I'm like, yeah, it's what the is dumbest that? thing ever. Yeah. You know, just, just because two people got hurt, you know, accidentally from this play, like how how it like I honestly think they're gonna have to throw it out because yeah. too many guys are gonna be getting fined from this. And I feel sorry for the guys that are out there, you know, living paycheck to paycheck because, you know what I'm saying, they're just trying to make it and they're getting fined, you know, for going hundred percent, you know, and, and making plays like that. Yeah, do you think that'll be hard to enforce? Because I'm sure, like, the way people fall or something, they're going to be accidentally maybe doing this. Like, I wonder how they're going to be judging that, I guess. There's going to be a lot of missed tackles. That's what I think. There's going to be a lot of missed tackles because I don't know how – what other way you can coach tackling a guy without – if you're going for the hip, you're going to wrap up and you're going to leave your feet to, you know what I'm saying, to – to bring this guy down. It's no other way. You know what I mean? So, and yeah. So, I mean, it'll be funny how they how they uh, referee it. I think, I, I think it's crazy. Phil, I got a question for you. Where is Brandywine, Maryland? Brandywine, Maryland. It's about... <laughs> Is that one of those? About 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes from D.C.? Because I'm from a, a little town, a little small town, <laughs> Alabama, called Theodore, Alabama, which is right outside of Mobile. I thought you always said Mobile. Well, Mobile is where they play the Senior Bowl. And I say, I've been to Mobile. Yeah, yeah, and I say Mobile because everybody's pretty much heard of Mobile. And I say uh, Theodore, and I start to tell people Theodore is the door to Mobile. <laughs> But I, I, I saw where you're actually uh, from Brandywine, Maryland. And well, that's, that's where my high school is. Where I, where I live was in Clinton, Clinton, Maryland. Oh. What? So if you if you look up a little bit of history of Clinton, Maryland, that's where John Wilkes Booth was killed, assassinated at. Oh. oh history lesson yeah. for us. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Well, well, so, I, I have a question now. It, it lists Penn State and Baylor. Now, Tell me about those that whole thing. Now, how did that? Uh... I started out. Uh, I started off at Penn State. I was there for two years, and then uh, got into some little off the field issues. And I didn't want to be in Joe Pa's doghouse because once okay. you're in Joe Pa's doghouse, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're it's, in. It's, it's no, it's no getting out of it. So uh, at that time, Coach Brian Norwood, he was the safeties coach at Penn State. He took the defensive coordinator job at Baylor, and I just transferred down to Baylor with him. That's cool. How was that process, you know, like being mentored during that time? You know, who did you turn to to help you facilitate that process? I noticed today, obviously, the game has changed a lot with college football. And it's crazy what we what we see with the transfers and everything. But what was that process like for you back then? Was it was it difficult or did someone help you through that? Uh, Just mostly my family. You know, it was it was it was kind of exciting, you know, being in college and then going to a new uh, another school or whatever. But I really didn't know much about Baylor till I was in the car on my way down there, you know. And uh, I looked at their their record, like in the last five years, the most games they won was three games, you know. And I think I just 
happened to get there on a, a great timing, you know, because Coach Browser came and uh, the strength conditioning coach, Kaz Kazadi, he was there. And, and without those two guys, you know, I don't think I would have made it to the NFL, you know, after transferring. So, I mean, it was, it was a blessing in disguise. Well, Phil, you, uh, everybody heard Gabby say that you were a first-round draft pick, obviously, of the Cleveland Browns, the 21st pick, I think it was. I like to ask uh, a lot of the players, because I know myself uh, when I knew that I was good enough to uh, play in the National Football League. What point in your career in high school, college, uh, did you realize that, hey, I'm good enough to be in the National Football League? Um. Uh- in high school, when I first got my first letters, that's when I realized, I'm like, okay, you know, maybe this college thing, you know, is something to do. I was just playing football just because all my homeboys were playing. You know what I mean? And uh, bowling and basketball was my first love. <laughs> wow. And, uh, Can yeah. you imagine Phil bowling? He's a bowler. Yeah, I still, I still bowl in the league. Stop every, it. Every, once a month. Yeah, you once you a think month. he was in a good gap? This is actually an amazing fun fact, and we're going to have to chat about this because I, I have a little <laughs> show that I'm, I'm cooking in the background, and this would be funny to, to see Phil in action. I mean, yeah, I could I see bowl. you being really good at it, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm all right. Uh, but it, like I said, yeah, bowling and basketball was my first love, and then once I started getting uh, letters from college, you know, that, that made me more excited. And then when I got to college, you know, at Penn State, you know, I was only there for my freshman and sophomore years. And, you know, it was more, you know, you're, you're, you're partying a little bit, you're young. And when I got down to Baylor, uh, it was it was kind of like a wake-up call, you know, and these guys, they were hungry. They they didn't win games. You know, I went to bowl games every year at Penn State. Right. And when I got down at Baylor, it made me, it gave me a new uh, perspective on how to work hard and things like that. And uh, they had an offensive lineman there named Jason Smith, and he had went number two overall in the draft. And my the year I set out, I had to be on scout team all year. So I played. I was just going against him. I'm like, well, I mean, I'm not doing half bad against him. So I'm right. like, yeah, I can probably, you know, hold up in the NFL. So, you know, everything went from there. Wow. Who were some of the guys that uh, that were in, already in the NFL that you uh, you looked up to and, and, and you wanted to uh, maybe uh, pattern your 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 game after or something? You know, me being a big nose tackle type of guy, I looked up to uh, Vince Wilford, uh, Warren Sapp. Yes. I looked at a lot of, uh, you know, pass rush stuff from Big John Randall. And, that, mm-hmm. that, and you know, a lot of my, you know, my pass rush moves with that big old club, you know, so, and I got that from him. So it was like, you know, those, those mean guys, gritty guys, you know, that's what I looked up to. What did you think when you uh... – when you found out the bounce, the Browns was going to draft you, and after you got here, what what were your thoughts on this football team? I didn't know where I was going to go, but when once I knew, uh, I loved it. I mean, I always loved the city of Cleveland. You know, growing up watching, you know, the NFL ball. You know, my hometown team was the Redskins at the time, but I always, <laughs> always like Cleveland. It was like that that gritty team because they had the dogs, you know, and the, you know the guys barking and things like that. So I always liked it as a kid, and I was a dog guy. I still am a dog guy. So it was just you know what I'm saying it was like a dream come true. Well, we got to get him with this with Gab because my understanding is. You were in the dog pound. Gab and I was laughing about this. You were in the dog pound, sitting in the dog pound during a game. That's when the Browns clinched to go in the playoffs. Now, what was that like over there? <laughs> no, it was crazy. What? It, it was awesome. It was. Uh, it, it, it almost made me feel like I was playing. I wanted to be out there on that field. But it, it was awesome, man. And actually, those two seats my buddy owned and uh, – I think I'll be buying those uh, season tickets for this year. So I'll have two two season tickets in front of the dog pound for this That's season. That's awesome. Hey, we have a couple more questions for you, Phil, but we got to take one break, Hanford, so we can sneak it in here. Uh, stick with us. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Hanford Dixon Show. Hanford and I were just chatting with Phil Taylor. He joins us now once again. Well, Phil, welcome in. And why don't you tell us the story? Because we were just going to talk about the dog pound. I know. I know. <laughs> it, I mean, it was awesome. You know, just being there, the experience. It was a night game. Uh, the stadium did something they never did before when they turn off all the lights and everybody yeah. had their cell phones. Yeah, Th- that right there had me sold. I'm like, man, we need a championship in this city bad. You know, it, yeah. it, it was just awesome. 
Because I was there for that game, too. And like you said, were you? Oh, you, you were there? Yeah, you had to be there, too. Oh, right I'm here, pretty right? sure I was there. Yeah, it was really cool when they when they shut the lights out. But I wasn't in the dog phone. pound, you know. But I, I, I should have been. He was, hanging, he was hanging out in the, in the cardio. <laughs> 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 uh, speaking of getting soft. Um, I, I was in there having a cocktail. That's where I was. I was having a, I was having a cocktail at that time. <laughs> where we were trying to mosey with this was the fact that, of course, Hanford, you are the creator of the dog pound. And, uh, you know, and, and Phil, he was talking about getting, you're going to buy tickets or you're going to buy these seats. Yeah, yeah, I got uh, my buddy. He's not renewing his for this year, so I'm going to take over his for this, this season. So, yeah, two seats in front of the dog pound. Which is really cool. And it's too bad you oh, guys yeah. are, couldn't get that copyright. Are you going to you gonna ask Phil, does he know who st- started the dog pound? You gonna ask him that question? Why are you laughing like that at me? Because you love to talk about yourself. <laughs> oh, I know, I know the OG started. Oh I know the my OG. man, my man! Woo, woo, woo! Never gotta give my bark in. Yes, now, you know? oh, yes. Yeah. Hey, we we gotta always remember who started it. The OG. Phil, you know what's funny though, and 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 I gotta say this: it was originally meant for the defensive line to uh, get those guys started. Because again, I tell everybody. I rem- you know, I'm from down south, and I remember how um, running around those dirt roads, how old dog used to chase the cat. And uh, we had the two all-pro cornerbacks, myself and Frank Minifield, the two all-pro linebackers, Clay Matthews and Chip Banks. But our defensive line just wasn't, you know, they, those guys, don't get me wrong now, those guys were excellent. I mean, they they would give you what they everything they had, and, and they made plays, but it just wasn't that dominant defensive line. So... We were trying to get those guys going, and we say, think of that old quarterback as the uh, cat, and you guys are the dogs. We're going to bark at you. And it started at when we had training camp at Lakeland Community College, and the fans at Lakeland Community College were so close. I mean, so close to us, and we started barking shit. Before we know it, everybody was the dogs. I mean, the whole defense, the whole team, and everybody was the dog. And, <laughs> Phil, you mentioned this. Listen to me. We did try to patent that thing. We did. But what happened, NFL Properties already had it. And you talking about it, we're upset. Can you imagine? That's crazy. Uh, they, know they be it. on it, man. Right, they be on it, man. right. And my understanding, too, they also uh, had the hogs. You know, and you remember in uh, uh, yeah, Washington? Washington? Yeah, yeah. Washington had yeah. the hogs. Oh. And NFL Properties had that, too, when they wanted to go ahead and patent that. They, they got so far ahead of it on you guys. Oh, yeah. I'm still sick about that It is that whole super thing. cool, even though you don't have this patent or whatever. It is still really cool to see how your legacy has played out and how everybody has been able to enjoy a piece of the dog pound, whether you played your former player or your or your current fan. Yeah, but it would be a lot better, though, if I had that big <laughs> pat- <laughs> Phil, i got to ask you this. I, we know um, uh, in your career you had uh, knee surgery. How how hard was that coming back from that? Man, it was. I, I came back from a few knee surgeries, uh-huh. uh, three to be exact. Mm-hmm. And uh, each time it just got harder and harder. Not physically, you know. I'm gonna work my ass off physically and get back. It was more mentally draining. You know what I mean? And, and each time, the first the first time was in Cleveland. First two times was in Cleveland, and you know, got back. Uh, after I left Cleveland, had a short stint in Denver, and then my last two uh, years was in Washington. I had a big quad quad tear in Washington. That was tough, wasn't it? That that was my toughest one. Yeah. you know, just to get back physically and mentally. But I got back from it. They signed me to another one year deal, and then uh, I ain't gonna say no names, but we had a. <laughs> uh, a bonehead head coach who had us going live <laughs> in a goal line period and the offensive lineman was cutting and I kind of hurt my MCL and that. So that kind of hurt, hurt me during camp or whatever. So I didn't make it out in Washington. So, you know, we were just and after that, I was like, I'm done mentally. And I'm like, I just gave it up after that. Right. Right. We were just talking about how you also played under so many different head coaches in your career. I think it was seven. We counted out. What was, what was it like having to adjust to each different, or each coach's different um, outlook? Uh, It was tough because it was – I had three in in four and a half years in in Cleveland. So In Cleveland, yes. And then I think – My first two was uh, Shermer, Pat Shermer. Then I had Rod Chizinski and then Mike Patton. So did you play under Hugh Jackson at all or no? No, no. Okay. I, I left right before Hugh. 
And uh, it, it was tough because you're basically, uh, other than my first two years, you're learning a new defense every right. year. You know, and a lot of these guys, they got the same defensive coach, you know, three, four years. They're just, they're just adding on to what they already know. For us, it was tough. It made it harder for us because we got to learn a whole new defense basically every year, you know. So, it, it, I mean, it was tough. And it was probably two different terminology. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just the plays and stuff are the same. Yeah. It's just the terminology. Right. So, say we said Vegas or something on this, but for the new coach, it would be like Toronto or something. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, it's hard switching those words around because you see something, you think of something that it, that it was, that it used to be. So, I mean, it's tough defensively, and I know it's even tougher on on the offensive guys when they got to learn a whole new playbook, a blocking scheme, and all that stuff every year. Yeah, that's something we don't talk about a ton. But just having with with um what you've got to remember and map out yeah. and recall is all of that studying done at practice, or is there a lot you kind of have to shoulder on your own outside of practice to to learn everything? Oh, to learn the playbooks, you got you got to be you know. On your own time, studying your plays and stuff like that. You know, you know, something recently came out on Netflix. The guy he wasn't studying his plays. You know, and it'll catch up quick. You know, when you're not watching film and things like that. This the NFL evolves, and if you're not watching film, you're gonna get left behind quick. Oh, there's no question about it. You gotta, you, you gotta be up on it because if you're not, you, you, you're gonna get out of here, and you're gonna get out yeah. of here in a hurry. We're gonna yeah. ship yeah. you out. You gonna get yourself hurt. You gonna get your teammates hurt. <laughs> right, sure. right. It's crazy to think of that side of the game because there's uh, so much you have to do to prepare mentally. Thanks for watching the Hanford Dixon Show. We're gonna have more with Phil Taylor right after this. Hey, dog. What do you think of this football team today? I'm liking it, man. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. <laughs> yeah. I just, uh, you know, hope all the guys buy in. You know, uh, it's a few guys that have been buying in, but the you know, defensive line looking nice. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, I sent my resume in to uh, a couple people in the organization. Hopefully oh, did I'll, you? Good. Yeah, hopefully I'll be able to, you know, do the Bill Walsh fellowship uh, program. Right. And, and, you know, and just whatever. I don't care if it's coaching, you know. Helping out with player development, or you know, I'm just you know trying to should use me. Yeah. I've been there, done that. You know, I feel like I can you know help help these young guys, you know, transition, you know, coming into the league and things like that. So yeah, well, that would be so smart if if they would take a guy like you, and, and it's a no brainer. I mean, it's just an absolutely no brainer, no brainer to bring you in. You know, because uh, obviously you know the system, you know what you're doing, and. Uh, but a lot of times you, you know, and I'll say it, I don't care about saying that you have a lot of them. They want to bring in a lot of their friends and uh, guys that uh, really haven't played the position. And if it was me, if I was in that position, you would already be a part of it, big dog. I would, Appreciate I would, I, I would, I would bring you right here because it just makes so much sense to have a guy like you on this roster, you know, helping those guys, especially like a lot of those, uh, a lot of those young guys. So you see us. Uh, this AF- AFC North is going to be tough this year. I mean, we got. It's, it's going to be exciting, man. I like it. I like it. it, 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 it it's going to be tough. I mean, uh, here's what I say. It wouldn't surprise me if all four teams in the AFC North go to the playoffs because Baltimore, yeah. Baltimore again is going to be strong. I mean, uh, when they brought in uh, Derrick Henry, I mean, not only do we have to worry about Lamar, we got. Derrick Henry to worry about. Cincinnati's going to be Cincinnati. I mean, obviously, we got Joe Burrows, who's coming back off of that injury. And then mm-hmm. Pittsburgh got stronger because the uh, only thing, they went to the playoffs. I think Phil's going to beat them out. You think? I think Phil's going to beat them out. Wow. <laughs> I think Phil's will beat them out. That's going to be. That's going to be yeah, interesting. I feel like they should have kept Fields in Chicago. He didn't have a bad year. Yeah. It was just bad coaching, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, I feel like, yeah. I, and, and you know what? It'll be tough, man. D-line and linebackers be going to have to, hey, you got to stay at home now. <laughs> 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 and, and I agree with you. I thought it was. I thought it was absolutely crazy they got rid of that kid. I mean, yeah. they yeah. just they just put it in their minds that they want to get him out of there instead of bringing him some more help in there. He just didn't have the players around him, and he played really, really good. So I agree yeah. with you. That's why I say Pittsburgh, even with what they had. 
they still went to the playoffs. And you can imagine with uh, those two quarterbacks, it feels, I mean, uh, with those fields and those two quarterbacks they brought in, it's going to be interesting to see what happened. But again, that AFC North is going to be strong again. Do you think Deshaun and Chubb are going to be ready to start this season? I don't know about Chubb. I don't know about Chubb. It's going to be tough to take his time. Yeah. Signing Jameis and Huntley. Yeah. Because the only, only person know how he feels, trust me, I've been through knee injuries. Not as bad as him, but at the same time, only only person know how he feels is him. Yeah. That training room, they're going to get – they. as soon as you say you can run, they're going to make you run. They can't cut you while you while you hurt. No. As soon as, soon as you say you okay, they're going to go with what you say. So you got the – you get you know how you feel, you know what I mean. So that's how you got to treat it. And Phil, I I know it's the it's two surgeries on that same knee. Now is it? I don't know why I want to say maybe three, but I, I think it was three. That's what his, I want to say. Freshman year, yeah. His freshman year, he blew blew it out, oh, or uh, maybe had an ACL or something. Then he blew. Then he did it again. I think his senior year or something, and then now in the previous year with the Browns. Well, let me ask you this, a couple more things, and then we'll let you go. Why is it you think when you look at our defense, I mean, obviously our defense is pretty good. They play extremely well at home. But when we get on the road, I mean, there's no way you would have told me that uh, Houston was going to beat us and that with that rookie quarterback. But for some reason, when we get on the road, we just don't play the way we play at home. I mean, I just I can't put my finger on it. Is yeah, there anything I, I noticed can that you? too. We, yeah. we didn't against Houston. I, I think we kind of underestimated them, and I don't know what it was. It, we didn't look like the Browns, you know, what I'm saying in, in that playoff game. And I don't know if we got out coached or anything. It, it, it could be multiple things because it's. You know, any entity, you know, you got 11 guys out there, you know what I'm saying, at any given time. So it it, it wasn't Cleveland football, that's for sure. And, it, it, you know, and I know it left a bad taste in their mouth as well. Well, Gab, I got to say this. Uh, you know, Phil and I, we just got back. Uh, we were on a cruise together. Oh, yeah. I want to hear about your cruise. And I also want to hear about Phil's, <laughs> Phil's background, too, before we let him leave, because he has a sick background. He's got a lot of shoes. I think some comics out there. So first, you guys tell me about the cruise, because I know he was there as well. Yes. And you guys linked up. So how was it? Well, we had a good time. Uh, we were, uh, we, uh, where, where, where did we go to Bahamas? We went, we went, for, first yeah, we, went out of, we went out of Miami, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Nassau and then uh, Falmouth. Okay. Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. We had a good time, did we, dog? Yeah, it was fun, man. It was fun. <laughs> we, we had I'm, a, I'm, all, I'm ready for the next. Hey, dog, we, we, next. we had a few cocktails, didn't we? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They <laughs> just, a, just a few, <laughs> if I know Hanford. <laughs> they be watered down on the boat. Yeah. So there, man. <laughs> that's, why we, that's why we had to drink so many, Gab. It, that's they, funny. they were watered down over that's there. Cool. <laughs> I, I, I think it's a cool concept and that you guys all got to get together again, see each other, catch up. You know what we did, oh, yeah. though? It was good <laughs> because, and I wasn't shocked at the amount of Browns fan that was on this. They pretty much took over the boat. But we got a chance to, they got a chance to really know us because we sit down, and Phil will tell you, we sit down each night. We had dinner at a table, and obviously we signed autographs. We had a, a question and answer period. It was it, it was all good. And, and like Phil said, I can't wait to go back neither. I'm looking forward to oh, it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, last thing, Phil, tell us about your background. What's the inspiration? Did you set this up yourself? Because it looks really uh, organized. No, nah, I mean, this it used to be... This whole shelf was upstairs in a the room. Then we had our youngest that became his room. So I had to relocate to the basement. <laughs> and a TV used to be right there. So I just filled it in with some Funko Pops. And the rest of this is shoes, uh, some cliques right here that I haven't even worn. I might give them to a big high school lineman or something that needs them. You know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm. You guys know, you know, with me, Joe Hayden, and us, yeah. we were big in the shoes. I haven't bought the shoes in a while, but uh, yeah, I mean, some of these shoes I got up there, you can probably. Yeah, you got some style. Go all, all the way down. Wow. Pretty impressive. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, some of them I ain't even worn yet. So yeah. 
We had to get a little inside the, you know, <laughs> little cribs action for our show. <laughs> Super cool. We know that you're stylish. And I, it. I know Appreciate I told you this, but I like keeping up with you and your family on Instagram. He's got the cutest, cutest family. And we were just at, uh, speaking of events, actually, you missed it. I did. You I skipped did. it on us. Well, I, I knew you guys were going and you guys would keep me up on it. So <laughs> I, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Josh and Maria invited us, but it was a really cool kind of get together. Um, had a little rooftop restaurant and stuff oh so yeah that's cool i they, think it'll be real nice in the summertime yeah they got a lot of people out so well hopefully i will be catching you in person some at some point phil and it's I have good a question. to catch did up you, with you did you have a cocktail over there I, uh, I did. I had a little glass, of, a couple glasses of wine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know. okay. All right. <laughs> That's what they had, right, Phil? They didn't really give you a whole lot of yeah, options. Yeah, I was, was drinking wine like, too. Whatever, whatever yeah. I can get the quickest because there was a line at the right. Bar. They gave you champagne though, right, right off the rip, which was kind of cool. Yeah, if you got there early enough, that's for sure. Yeah. With dog, we appreciate you. Yeah, thanks for Appreciate coming on, you, Phil. Man, for sure. Thank you guys. We'll talk to you soon, and best of luck with your applications. Keep us posted. Oh yeah, we'll do. Thank you. All right. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Hanford Dixon Show. We were just joined by Phil Taylor, which was a really nice interview. It's really cool because he's such a down-to-earth person. You know, Gabby, he really is. And and like I said, as you already know, we were on the cruise together and uh, had, had a chance to really get a chance to know him uh, because before this, obviously, we were in two different areas planned. Uh, but I had a chance to sit down with him, uh, obviously have a beer or two with him and um, – um, he, he's he's such a laid back, nice guy. And he could be, for a lot of people that don't know him, he can really be intimidating because he's such a big guy. I mean, he's like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, um, <laughs> he's and got a presence to him. Yeah, yeah. But he's he's really just, uh, um, he's just a nice guy. The I mean, sweetest he, guy, he, yeah. Well, you could say that. I didn't want to say that, you know, <laughs> but you, you could say that. He really is. Because yeah. anytime I encounter him, it's just, it's just cool. It's just cool the energy you read from people, and he just uh, seems like he gives off good energy. And, and I thought it was great. Um, you know, you and I, we were sitting here, we were, we were giving him a hard time about him being in the uh, dog pound yeah. when we uh, clinched. I wish I, I wished I was sitting in the dog pound I when uh, we clinched. Because can you imagine? That place is like crazy and wild anyway. Can I you know. imagine with him being there, sitting in the dog pound when we clinched? That was that was great. That that was cool to oh. recount it from his point of view. Um, well, hey, you know what? Let's talk a little more Browns here. There's some Greg Newsome yeah. trade rumors. Have you heard about those? Like, do you think that's gonna go for, or we're gonna, that's gonna happen for us? Well, you know, actually, I have. Uh, I've heard about it, and uh, I think what happened was, um, especially at the uh, owners' meeting, uh, Andrew Barry tried to put some of those rumors to uh, bed uh, because. Uh, when you look at Greg Newsom, I think he was the number 26 pick in the 2000 and, um, 2021 draft. And uh, he's headed right now into the uh, final year of his rookie contract, which is, uh, I think we're on the, I think it's like $2.39 million, I think something like that. I think those are the numbers that uh, uh, where he's going to make this year. But we have until uh, May 2nd, I think, to pick up that uh, uh, the option, um, uh, the fifth year option. But that's when that number really, really increased. Um, make sure I got this number right. I think the option for 2025 goes to 13, over 13 million dollars that we will have to pay him. Wow. And this is where um, we're going to find out. If what Barry is saying is the truth, because think of it from two million to over thirteen million dollars, that's a lot of money we already got in the uh, cornerback backfield. Because obviously, you know, we're paying Denzel Ward a lot, a lot of money, and then we have, um, uh, you know, you look at it. Uh, we just uh, you cannot. Me personally, I don't think you can have enough cornerbacks, enough defensive backs. I think you have to have a lot of them, but you don't want to have to uh, get in a position where you're paying them all. Well, you pay a because, lot. Yeah. And then when you look at it, we also, um, we got all that money. Deshaun, is, uh, I mean. It's a looming thing, huh? It's yeah, a thing, it's always yeah, we, in consideration. I don't care what we say or how we think about it. His cap number is huge over there. And then, you know, we got the kid Emerson. I mean, we have him out of Mississippi State. I mean, obviously, he's the other corner playing on the other uh, on the opposite side of uh, Denzel Ward. So we got him he's got over some there. Right pro 
potential for sure. Yeah, yeah, but the good thing about it, I mean, he's uh, he's still in his rookie contract, so that's a good thing. But it's going to be interesting to see what they do and how they do it with Greg Newsom. Obviously, I think they still want to keep him. I think they want to keep him with the Cleveland Browns. But the problem is, at that price, it's going to be really, really hard because uh, – if you notice, they were trying to figure out a way that they can keep uh, Nick Chubb uh, this year. There was a lot of talk, a lot of rumbling. I don't, I'm sure you heard them. They was thinking about maybe what are we going to do? Are we going to keep him? Are we going to let him yeah. go? Or how are we going to do it? How are we going to keep him? But we were able to restructure some contracts, and obviously we can keep uh, we can keep him with this football team. Were there any uh, trade rumors? Were there ever any trade rumors about you back in your day? There, there. are. There's always trade rumors. I don't care. I know there wasn't social media I, I don't and care. everything. Well, yeah, thank God. You know, we didn't have social media. Uh, we don't so want you're any not of, like on blast about yeah, it, but you know, the talk of the yeah, town. Yeah, we don't want any of those pictures running around. But uh, uh, you know what? I, I, I think at some point, I don't care who you are or what your name is as far as a player. I think at some point uh, y- you will uh, come across some trade rumors. I think it's very, very rare there's a guy that you don't hear anything about uh, trade rumors, especially toward the end of their career or when they're uh, making a ton, a ton, a ton of money. Sure. So to answer your question, um, yeah, there was uh, there was there was some there was some uh, rumors going around. But you do what you can to try to keep him and, 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 and try to stay where you, you know, where you where you're playing at. But you can't control those rumors you just got to continue to go out and continue to play and, yeah. and 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 do what you do but i like our football team i really do i think we've made some uh, good moves uh, especially with jerry judy coming on the offensive side uh the wide receiver and then we gave him a ton of money also also so and uh we signed another running back and um, this football team is going to be strong but again i told you what i've always said the problem is every team in the afc north it's, it's going to be good. Yeah. But you're right, though. I really do like our moves. So uh, we'll have some exciting things to, to think and talk about in our coming episodes as well. We're going to take our last break, and we'll be back to wrap up the Hanford Dixon Show. Thanks so much for watching. Welcome back to the Hanford Dixon Show. Hanford, we didn't really talk too much about it, but the new rule changes for the NFL. I know they're tweaking stuff all the time, but what were your initial thoughts about these, these new rules? Well, who did your makeup? Oh, you're back on the makeup train? You know why? Are you trying to fill time or something? Let me tell you why. <laughs> because I know now, I get first of all, I get tired of people coming up to me saying the only reason why they watch the show, they hand for it. No, no disrespect to you. But uh, we watch the show not because of you, because we watch it, we we want to look at Gap. Now that you got that makeup on all uh, looking fancy What's that dance. song? I put yeah. on my makeup. <laughs> Look, yeah. I know she would get I going. I'll say a little prefer <laughs> Is that the same song? Get her, I don't know. Get her song in. I mixed them. Oh, uh, <laughs> What was your question? I forgot your question now. What was your question? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny too because I'm like yeah. losing my voice because I've been sick but uh, I appreciate you. You know, um, good makeup day, bad hair day. That's why we're wearing the hat. But anyway, <laughs> your thoughts on these new rule changes. The... You know, with the drop hip, hip drop tackle. Yeah. Well, I, I don't have a problem with the hair, so uh, I'll oh, okay. leave that one alone. But, you know, Gab, it, it's crazy because. Um, and then I, the k- new kickoff rule, too. I, I, it just, you know, I'm for anything that's making the game safer. I mean, I really am. And I think when you, first of all, when you look at that kickoff, the kickoff, I, I like it because I, I want to see something exciting. I think when you look at it now, is that the same thing they do? Well, is that the same thing they do in the U- US, UFL or Ex- whatever it is? XFL. XFL. They did it in the XFL. I don't think they're doing it in the UFL. Okay. Okay. So I, only the kicker and two returners will be allowed to move until the ball hits the ground or is touched by a returner inside the 20. Any kick that reaches the end zone in the air can be returned or the receiving team can opt for a touchback in possession at the 30. And you know what I think? I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to eliminate collisions. Collisions, yes. And you know on the kickoff there's been brutal, brutal uh, collision, but you talked about before that that drop hip or whatever that thing that tackle is. That's the most craziest <laughs> thing in the world. And Phil said the same thing. I mean, it's just absolutely insane that you would. I mean, because when you got a guy and you're trying to tackle him, you just want to get him down any way you can. You just want to do it. I mean, and they're not trying to hurt the guy. I mean, I think two guys or one guy got hurt during the whole thing. I think that is ridiculous. Don't make the game soft. I mean, we've already made it soft enough, but. 
that's my feelings. Don't yeah. get me going on that. Uh, you want to see me turn hip, red? Hip drop. You want to see me turn red? Yes. I'll turn red on that. You that that's you that. seeing red on this <laughs> on this tackle. You would have played it like in your day. Some this people is how we say do. we gotta go. We gotta All go right, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Stop one up in me. Thanks for watching the Hanford Dixon show. We'll see you next <laughs> week. <laughs>